we're going to have President Bob Jackson from Murray State, who's going to be reporting to us via Zoom. Well, as I was saying a few minutes ago, first and foremost, thank you for letting us participate by Zoom, I think. Um, you saved us uh, eight hours on the road. There's a couple of important events on campus today and a couple of important uh, uh, alumni and donors traveling in from other states. And uh, so it allowed us to be here and it saved us eight hours on the road. Also, I talked to Dr. Thompson a year ago and I told him this asset preservation and deferred maintenance thing is vitally important. And I know we all agree and some of that's gonna go into technology, right? <laughs> I want to cover four things over the next uh, just few minutes. You all should have handouts from us that uh, we sent in uh, a couple of days ago. So four handouts that I want to touch on. There's some fast facts that I want to cover. Um, Murray State University is a, is a unique institution. Many of you have not been here most likely. And uh, again, we're 265, 275 miles away. And I want to tell you a little bit about Murray State. I did that last year too in this presentation and some items that are going on on campus and, and initiatives that uh, are occurring as we speak. And then also I'll hit on both strengths and opportunities on the placemat that you, uh, that you have in front of you. Most of you are fully aware of this, but we were founded almost 100 years ago. So we're, we're approaching our 100th birthday. We have a few less than 10,000 students on a headcount basis. Actually today, it's about uh, this, or this last fall, it was about 95, uh, 70. 97% of our students, and I'm gonna to touch on this in a little more detail in just a moment, but 97% of our students our first time full-time students receive some type of financial aid. That could be a scholarship uh, as well, but that's important to note. And most of the institutions in our Commonwealth uh, will have a very similar statistic. We have students at Murray State from nearly every county, and we have students from nearly every state at Murray State uh, as well. 48% of our students are first generation college students. Uh, and that's important too, because the services that we provide and the needs those students have uh, are in many times uh, quite unique. And we have about uh, 70,000 students, I'm sorry, 70,000 alumni uh, around the world. So there's gonna be in front of you, there's going to be, I hope everyone has this, a good news report. We send this to the CPE uh, regularly, and I'm going to touch on some of these items in more detail in just a moment. But in the good news report, you're going to see 2019 enrollment information, and I'm going to touch on it again uh, very specifically in just a second. Since I've been in this, this role nearly 18 months now, we've really, really focused on enrollment, and are, there's a reason. 70% of our budget today is enrollment driven. 70% uh, of our budget is determined by our enrollment. When I left the state Senate 15 years ago or so, about 70% of our budget came from state appropriations and 30% came from uh, our students through tuition and fees. Today that's flipped and it's 30% appropriation and 70% from students tuition and fees. So the higher ed world has changed. It's changed quite uh, dramatically and, and that's really been a change the last uh, 15 or 20 uh, years or so. You'll notice also in the good news report, an area that we've been focusing on uh, over the last 12 to 18 months are need-based scholarships and need-based initiatives. And that's vitally important to, to all of us in the Commonwealth of Kentucky, but it's especially important uh, to Murray State. So in, this, in the past uh, few weeks, we've, we had a very special fundraising campaign to raise over uh, $219,000 for need-based, additional need-based awards on top of the other millions of dollars of awards that this institution makes just for 
uh, fall 20 students coming in, first time freshmen, first time transfers, uh, as well as uh, retention scholarships for other, other students. So focusing on low income and underrepresented minority students with those additional monies. You'll, on the good news report, you'll notice, um, and it's something that, uh, that we're proud of among many other things, but the city of Murray, uh, Murray is very much a, a traditional college town, but it was named as one of the safest in America. And that's an important accolade for Murray State uh, as we recruit students and retain students uh, here. And also there's some information about new academic programs uh, that have been approved uh, really over the last uh, many months or so, or last few months. There's an op-ed piece that I just wanted to make sure everyone had that. Uh, it's called the Murray State Promise. Uh, this is a copy from the Lane Report, but it was published statewide in a number of uh, uh, newspapers, both uh, across the state, east to west. But it really just reaffirms our commitment to our promise to our students, to making sure that access and affordability uh, it's vitally important to us, is met, and that uh, we do everything we can to make sure we're meeting the needs of those students. But I wanted you all to have a copy uh, of that information, that op-ed piece. The next piece that's in front of you is the Murray State Promise Tuition Program. And that is our specific program that we started uh, uh, several months ago in regard, again, to low-income uh, students. And this particular scholarship program fills in the gap. It's, it's a gap scholarship. So uh, it's self-explanatory on, the, from, on this, uh, this handout, but you will, you will see it's helping students and, and we're meeting the needs again of low-income students. And this is for any student in the Commonwealth of Kentucky and, and Kentucky residents only. There's some fast fact information on the next handout that you'll see as well as uh, legislative priority pieces. Uh, our legislative priorities are consistent with what all of us have agreed to as institutions, as well as the CPE, focusing on asset preservation, deferred maintenance, additional monies into the performance funding model, uh, some specific priorities that are important to Murray State that we've, we've all agreed to, and, and the 2% stop loss component in the performance funding model to protect all the institutions in the Commonwealth uh, as it relates to the performance funding model. So there is no cliff. Uh, as you all know, as the council members know and, and CPE staff members know, um, Murray, Moorhead and Kentucky State uh, have some challenges with the performance funding model that we'll be working through in, in the months ahead in regard to funds we receive uh, out of the performance funding model. And over the last several months, that's been uh, zero. A couple other items I want to point to just very quickly uh, as as well. And it's, it gets back to access and affordability. So last year, as we as we uh, set our tuition rate uh, within the guidelines of the CPE, our undergraduate rates changed by 1%. And we also put an asset preservation fee in place. So a 1% increase, and actually we had no increase on graduate students. It's important to note also related to this component uh, of, of cost and, and access and affordability, we started um, plans to embark on a major capital campaign uh, several months ago, and it, it will be a, a large campaign and it will be uh, 50 percent focused on scholarships and and much of that will be on need-based scholarships so we continue to focus on that component that's where we see some of the greatest challenges with our students uh, is is the tremendous financial need that exists out there and making sure we do everything we can to retain those students uh, at every level related to that and this was touched on uh, uh, by my colleagues that preceded me Murray, Moorhead, and Kentucky State are the bottom three in regard to mandatory uh, fees and tuition. So if you add those together, we're at the very bottom. So Murray State is, is on the bottom uh, component of the cost uh, of, of tuition and fees. 
that's where we want to position ourselves. We, we position ourselves as a high quality, high value institution. And uh, you'll, you'll see Murray State continuing to, uh, to maintain uh, that particular accolade and that particular positioning uh, going forward uh, as well. In, re in regard to the 70% of the budget that I talked about a few minutes ago is, is student driven, enrollment driven. This past year, uh, after four or five years of declines in most new student categories, we had a first time freshman increase of about 7.7%. .7%. So not many institutions in the Commonwealth nor around the country were able to uh, to increase first-time freshmen. We increased first-time transfers by 10.7% and first-time graduate students by about 12%. And this is, again, after four or five years of, of double-digit declines. This is particularly meaningful to us because, again, like our peer institutions in, in the Commonwealth, when 70% of your budget is driven by enrollment, in order to prevent from continuing uh, the process of cutting as we had for many years, we've got to grow the enrollment process. And I, I want to thank Dr. Thompson, the CPE staff and the CPE council, the council members, the board, in regard to the attention given to making sure that we're, we're looking at out of state uh, students too. We're bringing them here and we're keeping them here. Murray State University is, is uniquely located we can throw a rock and hit Illinois, Missouri, Indiana, and Tennessee. Uh, so we're, uh, those states are very important to us from a recruiting standpoint. Illinois is an example. And some of you have heard me say this in the past. Illinois is the number two college student exporting state in the country. More students leave Illinois to go to college in another state than any other state except California. And uh, we're just a few miles from that border. We spent a lot of time in Illinois recruiting students, and I appreciate again your all uh, your all's focus in regard to assisting us uh, in looking at other states. We've been doing this a long time, and uh, Illinois, Missouri, Tennessee are vitally important to the livelihood of, of Murray State University uh, as well. Our numbers, our preliminary numbers uh, for Illinois for this uh, next fall look very good, and for this last fall. Uh, we increased our Illinois numbers as well as Tennessee and Missouri, as well as the Commonwealth of Kentucky, uh, most importantly, as well as our 18 counties, our primary service area. I want to say this for the record, and it's, it's vitally important. We, and I was joking at the very beginning when I talked about deferred maintenance and asset preservation. That component is vitally important to all of us. And I think we will... Um, We'll see some positive things from the governor's budget as well as the legislature in supporting matching monies for asset preservation. We have buildings on this campus, like all of our peer institutions that are approaching 100 years old or older. And the, the deferred maintenance needs of those particular buildings uh, to serve our students and faculty and staff on these campuses, uh, it, it, we're at a real pressure point. And, and so this will help us in addressing those needs because as you all know, we must address it uh, out of our appropriated or student revenue dollars. And it just puts additional pressure uh, on our operating budget. So from a legislative standpoint, that's something that's very important to us. Uh, I touched on additional funding in the performance funding model in order, we, let me back up and say it this way. We must get all institutions to equilibrium. We must get all institutions to the point where we're benefiting from the performance funding model. Putting no money in the performance funding model, we're simply trading from one hand to the other. And uh, we've got to put new dollars there. And I think the legislature and, and the uh, administration is supportive of, of doing just that. So that's important to us in the days ahead as we talk to our legislators um, around the Commonwealth. I wanna talk about pensions for just a second because I want, I want to stress the pressure on Murray State 
Moorhead, Eastern, Western, Kentucky State, Northern, in regard to pensions. And it, it, it impacts everyone in the Commonwealth except the University of Kentucky and the University of Louisville. In the KERS system today, we're at a 49% contribution rate, 49%. Uh, and that was frozen for one year. So we're in the one year freeze. It was going to go to about 84%. And then we were told it was going to 89%. And now we've been notified that uh, starting July 1, if action is not taken in some form or fashion, uh, that new KERS rate will be 93.01%. This comes out of our budget. And for us, it's a significant number. It's a significant number for all of our, our peer institutions, but if we increase just on the KERS component from 49 to 93.01, it's, it's about five and a half million dollars that we have to find in our budget. So it's about five and a half million dollars. So I, I, I want to stress that as we talk about everything else, uh, the importance of managing the pension system in this Commonwealth and, and getting some attention and relief uh, in regard to it. In regard to the placemat in front of you, and I know I'm, I'm, I'm gonna cover some of these items uh, very quickly. Um, I'm standing between you all and, and lunch at this moment, some strengths. And I'm, I wanna point out uh, about three strengths and about three opportunity areas for Murray State. Graduation rate, we're, we're first among the comprehensive institutions in regard to our overall graduation rate. We're very proud of that. We work very hard to make sure we, we keep it at that level. Um, our goal, as you'll see from the placemat that you have in front of you for graduation rates is at 58%. So we're not at our goal but we also have the highest goal among comprehensives. So that's vitally, vitally important to us. Secondly, related to the graduation component, STEM H is key to Murray State. We have the number one percentage in the state of all degrees awarded percentage wise among all institutions at 46.29%. Um, of our degrees awarded are STEM H degrees. We're also first in low income grad rate. And I've talked a lot about uh, meeting the needs of our low income students uh, and, and addressing the financial issues there. And I think the reasons why in regard to graduation rates, and this, is, this has been going on at Murray State for a long time, is we have a unique residential college system uh, we have a very hands-on philosophy with our students. Uh, our faculty members do a wonderful job in advising and assisting students. So those are the components that help us drive the graduation um, rate that we have. Retention, overall, low income, and URM, we're, number, we're the number one among our comps. And uh, again, I would credit that to our faculty and staff, our residential college system, which is unique, which breaks down this bigger university into smaller pieces uh, for better advising uh, among our students. We started a new student monitoring uh, program uh, in the last year. Uh, and, and just that hands-on advising, that personal touch that we try to give every student is vitally important to both graduation rates uh, and retention. I talked about STEM age already. Um, again, we continue to grow academic programs in that area and, and we continue to focus on, on STEM age, which is important to us and it's important to the Commonwealth. Some opportunity areas. So areas we need to work on. Underrepresented minority and low income degrees awarded. So we're we're graduating, we're retaining, but still uh, we, we've got to find and do more in regard to making sure degrees are awarded to those, those groups. We don't rank where we shouldn't in that regard. In the last year, we formed uh, a presidential task force and we're gonna be looking at faculty, staff and students 
recruiting and retention and ultimately the graduation component. So we've got a group working on that very diligently uh, as we speak. Low income URM need-based scholarships will be a component of that. We continue to grow it. I've touched on it a few times now. <clears throat> that is key. Promoting and enhancing the Murray State Promise component is vitally important because again, the number one issue we see with obviously low income students and uh, many of our underrepresented minority students is the financial pressures placed on them. And we must address those financial pressures that are placed on them uh, in order that they, we do retain them and they do graduate. Another opportunity area for us is in the underprepared area in English and math. Again, that information is on the sheet in front of you. We are looking at implementing a new bridge program. We have current programs in place and how we can enhance the bridge program academically um, and, and assist those students that are underprepared. We continue to focus on the tutoring, the hands-on effect, the personal, the personal component with our faculty, and those students and assisting them. We have a number of programs. I won't outline all of them, but we continue to focus on the underprepared uh, component. Uh, and, and I think it's important to say, you know, many of the students we're, we're, that we're getting as first-time freshmen or first-time transfers to Murray State University, um, you, you know, they come in under underprepared from, from our high schools. And so there's a component there that we must work on as a commonwealth, uh, too. The ad adult enrollment, the last thing I'll touch on, adult enrollment's a challenge for all of us. It's a challenge for Murray State University. We're looking at several new and innovative programs in regard to uh, adult enrollment. We, we actually had a meeting yesterday to talk about that component and how we grow that piece, including the military piece. Fort Campbell is in our service region. It's not uh, very far from our campus and, and, and doing some new and unique things as it relates to uh, Fort Campbell and, and our adult enrollment there. Um, let, let me stop there and um, to see if anyone has any questions. And I may have to ask you because of the technology this morning um, to repeat some of those. Our speakers here are somewhat like you're all speakers. We're not picking up all of the all of the sound from your end. But again, thank you uh, for letting us present this information. Thank you for letting us pr participate in this manner today. And and um, I look forward to seeing all of you soon in person. Thank you, Bob. Any questions? I've uh, got a question from Richard Nelson. Let's see if his mic works. If not, he'll have to come up here to my mic. Can you hear him, Bob? No, but I can hear you well. You may have to repeat Richard's uh, question, please. Good morning, Dr. Jackson. Hey, good morning. I'm a little biased because that's my neck of the woods and my daughter is there too. So appreciate the good work you're doing. Quick Thank you. On the first year to second year student retention rate, you mentioned you ranked number one. And then you mentioned also that it's that personal touch that you put on that working with the students. Are there some things that you're doing that would transfer to some of the other peer institutions to help them or maybe a model there that would show them how to retain their first and second year students? And I don't know if you can get, get the, the, I got most of it except Richard, it's good it's good to see you. I, I saw you there for a second. It's also good to hear from you the, the question. I just didn't get the last part. Well, well, what is the difference? Yeah, just, you know things that are transferable to sure. your institutions that you're doing at Murray State that would help them. I mean, I think, so right. I think that that personal touch, and that's one reason why we sent Rose there, my right. daughter, because of that personal touch. And you're very aware of that. You were in on that's it, right. and I thank you for it. Right. I was impressed by that personal touch. And I'm wondering if there's something that the other peer institutions could learn from, or maybe a model that you have there. Sure. Maybe it's just a great employees. And I'm sure the other institutions have great employees too, but you're number one in the state in that area. 
Right. How can we help the other institutions increase as well? Sure. Thank you. A, a very good question. And, I, and Richard, we're, we're, we're very proud. This institution has a long history of because of our size uh, and, and we do value that personal touch. And that, that, that sounds simple and easy. It's not. Um, you know, the room, and I've known you a long time, and, and you and I and, and Rose were in the very same room I'm sitting in right now when we recruited you and her here. And, and, and I think it's that touch from the president all the way down to, to uh, our custodial and grounds crew in regard to that, that personal interaction with students as, as they walk across campus. The, another big thing that we did many years ago, 25 years ago, and it was the vision of Dr. Kern Alexander at the time is, is to build and develop a residential college system. And many of you are aware of that model we have. Our, our peer institutions have living learning communities. Everyone calls them something different, but our residential colleges, we have a faculty head in each of the residential colleges. We're interacting with our students in each of the residential colleges each and every day. We, we are tutoring them. We're advising them on life. We're advising them on finances. We're advising them on, on, the, on graduating and the future uh, job opportunities they're going to be uh, faced with, uh, you know, as they, as they leave here. And I think that piece makes us unique and different than most institutions, really, not only in Kentucky, but in, in, in the country, uh, as it relates to that experience in our residential colleges. So I think it's all of the above. And, and this, is my, this is my alma mater, too. And, and I always tell my personal story because I think it fits with, with your question exactly. Um, I grew up in, in central Kentucky and I looked at uh, a lot of institutions in state and out of state. And I came here for the very reason that uh, you're describing and I'm describing was the personal touch. And it was noticeable then in the 1980s um, and it's still noticeable today. And it's an important attribute of Murray State University that uh, we will continue into the future. Thank you. Dr. Jackson, uh, your comments on non-resident and uh, recruiting non-resident uh, students, how many of these are under a reciprocity agreement? In other words, are most of them coming in with the out-of-state tuition, or are they under a reciprocity agreement with in-state tuition? Sure. Uh, a very good question. Most of, um, let me say this first and foremost, Dr. Stad, in regard, to, I think that was you that asked the question, uh, and, it, and it's good to hear from you this morning. About two-thirds of all of our students in our first-time first time freshman students that came in last fall are from the Commonwealth of Kentucky. So that's first and foremost, two thirds approximately. This is off the top of my head, but it's pretty close. Um, Vice President Dudley and, and Dr. Renee Fister are sitting here with me and believe me, they'll correct me quickly if I get too far off, off base. In our 18 county service area, uh, that, that is our primary focus uh, at Murray State University, of our first time freshman class, and this is indicative of, of really past years as well, about 42% to 45% um, are from our 18 county service area. So obviously that's where we're recruiting the hardest. That's where we spend most of our time. Um, so 67% are Kentuckians. Our number one out of state uh, student population area for new students is Illinois now. It used to be Tennessee. Uh, just a few years ago, and for many years it was Tennessee. Tennessee now is behind Illinois, uh, and that's Illinois is increasing because of our focus and attention, because so many students are leaving. But all of our students uh, are coming here under some type of regional tuition model that uh, that we've had created for a long time. Now we this past year we we've, we've altered that model uh, just a bit, so. Indiana, which is obviously not far from here, Illinois, Missouri, and Tennessee all have a regional tuition rate. So under an agreement 
uh, that we have with these particular states under our tuition modeling, uh, most of our students, 95% of our students are Kentucky, Indiana, Illinois, Missouri, Tennessee, re really the regional rates. The, it, it's, um, and it's obviously it's more than our, our residential rates uh, by a considerable amount. So we, we have our in-state rate, we have our regional rate of the states I just described, and then we have the rest of the United States rates and, and really only about 5% of our students are international. This is approximate, but about 5% are from other states and around the world. Bob, thank you. I'm sorry about our technical difficulties here, but um, we appreciate Well, thank you all. Thank you. I appreciate it. Thank you all for what you do. Thank you for advancing our legislative initiative and let's all keep our fingers crossed and, and work very hard. And I, I really think that uh, I talked to Dr. Thompson earlier this morning. He's doing a wonderful job. We're all spending a lot of time in Frankfurt, uh, including Murray State over the last uh, several weeks. So, uh, hey, let's hope for a po positive news in April. And thank you all again. Great. Thank you.